una y dos y dos una y dos Hello and welcome to Cortez NYC Livestream, the podcast. This show broadcasts twice a week out of New York City. We are your hosts, Cortez NYC. And Carla de Puerto Rico. And on the show, we talk about art, creativity, city life. From a Latino perspective, I'm a visual artist. And I'm a singer. And this is episode 40, No Mistakes. As always, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, and Spotify, and also on social media, on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to check out my online store, CortezNYC.BigCartel.com. Uh, there you will see original art, graffiti pins, stickers, posters for sale. Um, the original art as it sells, I will be uh, re cycling new, yeah, mm -hmm. restocking with new pieces. So uh, go back, keep checking it out. And um, shout out to all our friends out on Instagram, all the people supporting, everybody reposting as they receive the merchandise. Yeah. Appreciate it. Shout out to Prox. Shout out to Dr. Greedy. Thank you for the support. And let's get started. Carla, how do you live a life with no mistakes? Tell me. Oof. Life is full of mistakes, right? Yeah, that's kind of difficult. <laughs> I guess you make mistakes and then you learn not to do it again. But even that, even is that, difficult. it's difficult. Yeah. I would say a life with no mistakes is a life full of uh, compromises, no uh, regrets. adjustments, no, yeah, regrets. no regrets. Yeah, no regrets, adjustments. Uh, modifications and keep moving keep moving forward because that's i think that's the way we overcome mistakes yeah if we don't get stuck on one mistake but we learn from it and we continue so uh this art talk i want to talk about drawing with a pen making no mistakes mm -hmm. doing the perfect drawing yes. no no pencils no erasers just a pen straight pen ink um and why i think that's important so I first started this way back in the day. I would say maybe, shit, maybe like 18 years ago, 20 years wow. ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember a, an old uh, friend of mine, an artist friend, Hugo Bravo. Check him out, Bravo Studios. Shout out to Hugo. Yeah. Hugo is an, is an illustrator. I met him when I was really young. I was maybe like 19 when I first met him. And he was a graduate of FIT. He had studied illustration. He had already done four years in the Marines. His personality was very disciplined. Mm -hmm. It was a very unusual character for me, <laughs> uh, being that I was just like a wild artist and he was a very disciplined artist, you know, coming from two institutions. Mm -hmm. But um, we became friends. And, and later on in life, when we would share, you know, drawing sessions and we would either go to sketch sessions or drawing sessions, figure drawing and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we started talking about drawing with a pen, straight up, drawing with a marker or with a pen. And he was emphasizing to me that I don't know where he learned it from, but that it was a, a good technique and a good practice to draw without erasing. And I was a little scared in the beginning when he said that, but you know, I'm versatile. I can, I can freestyle. I can do things like that. So I, I, I figured I'll listen to his advice and I would try it. Mm -hmm. uh, the first couple of drawings that I did, especially figure drawing that I did with just a pen, you know, was rough. I mean, a lot of it was like really heavy. You know, you start making lines and then you don't like that line, but you can't erase. So you start going over it and over and over <laughs> and over. And the next thing you know, it's just a lot of ink and uh -huh. it's really thick lines and it looks crazy. And he was telling me to just keep going at it that what he learned i guess through a teacher or something was was to just keep going at it that you're you would eventually begin to develop a sense of which marks matter mm -hmm. which are the lines that matter which are the ones that don't and that you would uh start to kind of guess ahead and you would start to think ahead before you start drawing and and it made me realize the difference between drawing with a pencil which i was used to with mm -hmm. an eraser or, or even chalk with an eraser and drawing with a pen or a marker that i you know you're forcing yourself not to erase you're forcing yourself not to make mistakes right right but 
you do make mistakes. <laughs> you just learn how to move with the mistakes. You learn to adjust to the lines. And in a way, you begin to um, draw lines and sketch with lines that are usable, that mm -hmm. you can work with. Mm -hmm. you, you, you begin to allow yourself to make these initial lines that you know you can do lightly at a certain shape that it's it's going to be disguised by the end so you won't really see it that that much it won't stand out um for for me right now that's one of my that's one of my go-to tools is i have a i have a black book and i have a pen you know i have a little sketchbook and i have a pen and i just i prefer to draw with a pen yeah um and i'll get into why towards the end of this but you know why really a pen to me is better than a pencil but a pencil you know, you can blend, right? So you can you can draw sharp lines, you can erase, you can blend, you can smudge, you know, and, and that's something you can't do with a marker. You can do it with a pen, and, and I think a ballpoint pen is the closest thing to an ink pencil, mm -hmm. is a ballpoint pen, because a ballpoint pen has a lot of versatility. But that smudging and those half tones that you get with a pencil is something you can't, that rendering is something you can't really do that well with ink, but, I think that you don't really need it and that's when you have to kind of just let that go I think I remember a teacher telling me one time that rendering when you're sketching you have to be careful not to over render because sometimes sketches don't have to be complete Perfect. drawings mm -hmm. yeah they're just sketches getting your idea down and that rendering can block you from letting your idea flow mm -hmm. um, a pen can allow you your idea just to flow once you once you accept that you're gonna make some mistakes it's gonna it's not gonna be perfect once you accept the direct lines that you put down then then you kind of accept the ideas and it's more just about the idea and you accept that it's an, an ink drawing a pen drawing um the, the thing that i like about a pen is that it doesn't it doesn't slow me down a pen a good pen if you get a brand new pen you know it's going to flow the ink is going to flow so you can just keep drawing as fast as you want mm -hmm. a pencil you know the, the tip will start to wear down you need to sharpen it you need to go back if you need if you start getting into erasing then you're going to erase some lines sometimes you might erase the lines you wanted yeah you know by mistake or whatever you, you your hand starts to smudge it i have a heavy hand and i tend to smudge my drawings if i draw too quickly pen allowed me not to worry about these things um i think a ballpoint pen allows you to do these half tones so if you do want to render a little bit at the end of your drawing a ballpoint pen is definitely a good way to go um because it'll it'll let you if you just kind of graze the paper lightly it'll let you do those half tones at that, that light tonality um and you can lay down heavy 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 you know strokes on top of each other to get a solid coat of ink mm -hmm. um but i think the key thing is that it, it allows you to see your idea and your lines automatically it allows you to put ideas together automatically sometimes you begin to create a sort of hieroglyphic style where, where you you imagine something, you put down some lines with the marker, you make some circles and shapes and whatever, and, and you become a little more abstract in your sketching if you allow yourself to go that route, just to get your ideas down. And it speeds your idea process um, a, a lot more. So if I'm, let's say if I'm, a, if I'm at, at a job and mm -hmm. somebody asks me to, to come up with an idea or, or they're brainstorming an idea and I, I quickly go for a pen and paper, and I just start going at it and I just it usually looks like shit it's just like some mm -hmm. funny little squiggles mm -hmm. but I can tell exactly what it is and it clears my thought right and it gets my point across and that's what a pen can do for you that a pencil can't if I were to go for a pencil suddenly I would start sketching and drawing and you know making right, it look right, a right, certain right. way um, with a pen you can the thickness of the lines makes a big difference and you emphasize more uh, the composition with the line weights and, and you don't worry about, like, if you're going to draw, if you're going to sketch an idea, let's say if you're going to do some lettering and it's an, an, a layout for something. I mean, we've done it here when yeah. we talk about laying out a flyer yeah, yeah, or an ad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you grab a pen, you start doing it. That sketch process is so much easier with a pen. If we did it with a pencil, you would probably would stop and be like, I, I don't want to do this because you yeah. would feel like I'm supposed to be some sort of artist right right but with a pen you can automatically just start laying out boxes of shapes and say, okay this is where the logo goes this is where the text goes mm -hmm. a pen frees you up that way to kind of you kind of like laying down a skeleton of a sketch mm -hmm. or an idea and and i think that's that's a much more um useful right you know uh as an artist i think in my opinion mm -hmm. now Going back to the topic of living with life with no mistakes, 
um, if you do get really good at sketching with a pen and you get start to get really comfortable and let's say you take it to the point where you actually go to a life a figure drawing a life class you know a figure drawing class where you're going to draw let's say a nude model and you start to do it with a pen you're going to suddenly realize it is a challenge but if you get really good at it you're going to realize how much faster you can draw with a pen mm. you, there's no need to sharpen there's no need to erase right you know you, you're just drawing exactly what you see as long as you tackle it lightly and you, your, your eye begins to measure more because mm. you're more nervous about you know laying down lines too heavy where they shouldn't be you really start to look at the entire page and you start to map and graph the whole page out with your pen lightly. Just Even if you just make little dots and go, okay, dot, 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 that's an area right there, dot, 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 that's an area right there. You know, thin lines, you do your thin lines first, you'll end up covering them later with thicker lines. Mm -hmm. But figure drawing with a pen is so much funner for me. I have so much, uh, I have much better experience figure drawing with a pen now than, than, uh, than with charcoal. With charcoal, I feel like I make a mess. I feel like I can get a, be a beautiful rendering, but really at a figure drawing session, I'm not gonna do a final painting. I'm right, just gonna right. sketch something. So it doesn't matter if it's in, beautifully rendered or not, mm -hmm. as long as I get capture the figure. The pen, because it's a pen, and because or it's a marker, because it's permanent, I don't have to worry about the pencil erasing later or, or smudging okay. later. It's a permanent sketch. It captures my gestures mm -hmm. as I'm doing them, and it's preserved forever, pretty much, until mm -hmm. you, you know, unless somebody actually destroys it on purpose. <laughs> but, but um, it capturing those squiggle lines that normally you would probably erase mm -hmm. with a pencil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the that's the sketch on a molecular level, on a, on, a, on an atomic level, on yeah. a you know, if you really look at the DNA of those sketches, by drawing with a pen, you allow those original little squiggles that you normally would erase with a pencil you allow those squiggles to live you give them a purpose yeah and makes the sketch more real i feel like brings, more alive it brings it it animates has it. movement yeah 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 it animates it and usually in in pencil drawing people tend to erase those uh -huh. and and they drawings begin to stiffen up a little mm -hmm, bit they mm -hmm. begin to get a little stale mm -hmm. um too perfect you mm -hmm. know i mean it's it's beautiful you know Again, if you're trying to do a beautiful illustration, a, a beautiful rendering, of course, graphite, pencil, chalk, charcoal, that you're going to get a beautiful rendering. But if it's a quick sketch or if it's a, a sketch of an idea, those there's a lot of marks that your hand does in the, in the thinking process that if you allow them to live within a pen drawing, they make they add to the they add to the story. Yeah, yeah to the memory, mm -hmm. you know, of what the thought process was that you went going through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen sometimes, like I'll give a good example, is I've seen um, like comic book artists or storyboard artists mm -hmm. do storyboards or sketches for comic books or storyboards in pen, you know, and you see their idea as it forms. You see yeah, that yeah. the arrows that they said, no, no, forget about that, X this, and point, point an arrow in that direction. And mm -hmm. you see like where they might have started to draw something, but then they decided to change their mind and they started drawing it on a different location. But that process, there is a thought process there. Mm -hmm. And it kind of informs you a little more. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's where it's beneficial. I mean, yeah, because the whole story is laid out in the paper without any... Um, nobody erased it. Nobody edited. Or edited, exactly. No editing, exactly. No editing. Yeah, you, I, you were, yeah, I got it. No yeah. editing, yeah. So because the whole process is there, so you can actually feel like you are in his mind. Yeah. In the person's mind, trying to figure out how to come with the final idea, the yep. final product, right? Yep. Um, I mean, how would you feel if you had to draw straight with a pen? No. No races. No? I mean, I actually, um, when I started to go to college, when I started college, I started to write more with a pen. Okay. And I feel like that can be a little bit relatable to what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because My, yeah, yeah. once you start writing with a pen, I feel like it's whatever you're retaining and same, you're trying to adjust your ideas into the paper and it makes it... I don't know, more more real to the whole process yeah. of understanding an idea, then writing it down with a pen and not with a pencil that you can erase and all that. 
um, it makes it like that you can really that you really have to listen and write down your ideas and make sure that you understood what you, before you, write, before it down. you yeah. write it down. Yep. Yeah. Um, drawing with a pen, I don't know. The only things I draw is a house and a flower. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I mean, I think you made a good point right there. Understand the idea before you write it down, right? Mm -hmm. Well, same thing in drawing with a pen, drawing with a marker. Understand what you're drawing before you start to just make lines on a paper hoping to find something. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of you sometimes with a pencil or with if you know you have an eraser, you you know, you're going to you're going to start to sketch and just look for the idea hoping that something's going to come to life. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're you're oh, I'm going to just start to sketch. I'm not sure what I'm doing and hopefully this will come to life. Mm -hmm. Um when you draw with a pen, you can do that if you're really good at it, but for the for the most part, drawing with a pen, you're going to think ahead and say do i really know what i want to draw first you might even think it to yourself a lot more you might even write down more like sometimes i'll write ideas in a sentence before i even sketch it mm. just to like be clear on what am i drawing you know you take notes a little more to, yeah. so that the idea lives in your head before you even put ink to paper um i think the ink the other thing about ink drawings you know the permanence like we said the longevity of it mm -hmm. um i think the longevity of, of a ink of a sketchbook completely done with it with a pen is is a uh, it just should be a, re a reassuring idea to the artist it should make you feel like all my ideas are preserved mm -hmm. you know I'm, i'm not wasting my time doing all these little sketches they're going to be in this book permanently for the rest of my life I can see them when I'm 90 right. and look back at this sketchbook and, right. and they're going to look just like they do, you know, the first day I sketched them because they were done in ink. Um, I think that should be reassuring mm -hmm. um, that your ideas are not going to just fade away or dust off. Um, you know, I mean, you could always spray fix it on pencils and all that, but I mean, it's so much more steps to go through. Yeah. Um, but I mean, going back to the idea of, and I, I think this is the last of it, but the idea of drawing without making mistakes the idea of what are mistakes it's a freeing sensation and you feel free when you can draw with a pen because you let go of this whole thing about making mistakes and you realize there are no mistakes and you accept that whatever mistakes are in there you have to kind of in your drawing and you're gonna have to kind of work it mm -hmm. you're gonna have to make them mean something in the sketch mm -hmm. um I don't know. I feel like when I go to draw, I don't have I don't have that tension of like, oh my god, I better draw the right thing or whatever. Because when I'm drawing with a pen, I know I know that there's gonna be mistakes. Exactly. And I then I, I don't see them as mistakes. I don't even use the word mistake. I'm just I'm like you know I just look at a drawing and I say if I if there were mistakes, I'll say well that was my first drawing uh -huh. of that idea, and I'll just right next to it I'll do another drawing uh -huh, uh -huh. just as fast. Yeah. With the pen. If there are still mistakes in that drawing, I'll look at them not as mistakes, but I'll look at them as other ideas to explore mm. or maybe parts that I have to practice more, mm. render. So let's say if I'm drawing a figure and I kind of messed up on the hand a little bit, mm -hmm. I'll do a sketch of a hand separately mm -hmm. because that let me know that was my sign that I'm not, I, I don't know the information that I needed to put down. Yeah. And then I'll st I'll study a hand separately on a new drawing. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think that's another thing that it allows you to do. It 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 really points out to you what are the parts that you don't know. Yeah, you know. It's so like it the first real step towards uh, towards the competition of a uh, good drawing at the end, right? Right. Like. Yeah, yeah. It it it's do or die. It really forces you to see what part of the idea you're not familiar with, mm -hmm. so that you'll. Look If you're smart enough, you'll look at your drawing and analyze it and say, okay, where did I kind of like mess up? Okay, mm -hmm. right there. All right. And no, you know, you can't erase it. So you really have to look at it. Yeah. I need to work on that tree. Okay, so let's sketch some trees now. You know what I mean? And that way you continue your sketchbook. The pages in your sketchbook will continue um, exploring the same concept, but little parts of it exactly. in a more analytical focused way. Um, instead of covering it up by just erasing and, you know, And all those things. Um, all right, but and then I mean the last thing I would say is markers. I love the the black ink quality, that high contrast of it. I think that that's another thing that pencils don't give you. Yeah. Pencils always look gray. Yeah. They always look light. 
you know, but that heavy ink aspect of it can open you up to a little more of a graphic look, mm -hmm. which helps you in design. Mm -hmm. So I think it's another, another tool that can also help you to think more in graphic shapes. And when you go to paint something or you go to design something, you, you start to think more in shapes because that's how you're drawing with the pen um, and markers. Um, but uh, I think that's it. I mean, you guys out there, try to, uh, if you don't do it yet, <laughs> try it. I really recommend it. I know some of you guys out there are like, no way. I'm going <laughs> to stick to my pencils. I'm going to stick to my uh, color pencils or, you know. But uh, I think you guys challenge yourselves. Try to draw with a pen. Um, don't worry about the mistakes. Just try to learn your lines and see what is it about the lines that your hand makes that, that you can actually learn to appreciate. The same way that you appreciate your signature. We, talk, we talked about a signature right. previously, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when you draw and you allow your lines to live, those are your signature lines and you begin to uh, appreciate them more when you draw. All right, guys. Separa menos tiempo. Un, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, dos, dos. Culture talk. Yes, culture talk. What? <laughs> so excited. Carla, what are we talking about this time? Well, this time we're going to be talking about Chef Jose Andres. Who the hell is that? Who's Chef Jose Andres? Well, um, I wanted to talk about Chef Jose Andres because even though he's not Latino, He's still part of us because he's Spanish, so that makes him Hispanic. Okay. Um, and he has been working uh, with Latino communities and Caribbean countries like Haiti and Puerto Rico, but we're going to go more into it um, when I'm talking about him. And to start, to talk about Chef Jose Andres, he was born in... Mieres, Mieres, Principality of Asturias, Spain. Okay. Uh, so he's Spanish. He started his career in Spain uh, as a chef. He studied um, culinary... Um, arts? Arts, yeah, exactly. <laughs> culinary arts. Um, and he started in... Uh, being a chef in TV in Spanish, so in in Spain, sorry. So in Spain, in Spain television, he had a TV show, and then he moved to the United States. And once he moved to the United States, he taught culinary physics um, at Harvard University. Wow! In 2012, he was named dean of Spanish studies at the International Culinary Center where he and Coleman Andrews developed a curriculum in traditional and modern Spanish cuisine, cuisine, which debuted in February 2013. Okay. So that's pretty cool. He brought his knowledge from his culture, his country, to the United States and created a, a curriculum that does basically something that anybody that is interested in can study. All right, so... Yeah. What is the what is his claim to fame? Why are we why is he on the podcast? Yeah, well <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go into it a little bit later, but um he created an organization that helped during natural disasters in uh, okay. Haiti, in California and also in Puerto Rico. Now I get it. Okay. Um he also had a controversy with Trump, but we're also going to go into it okay. a little bit later. Um, so that's why, yeah, that's why we want to talk about him because I feel like he helped a lot um, the Caribbean islands um, because it wasn't only Puerto Rico. I didn't know that he helped also Haiti during uh, the earthquake, after okay. the earthquake. Um, so I feel like he's really committed not only with the culture of, with the Latino culture, but also with its people yeah. to help and to try to, um, he's, also, he's like solving problems even if he doesn't have to really solve the problems. Right. If, if, yeah. No, no, no. I think I understand what you're saying. And, mm -hmm. and he's going beyond a, a, a typical chef's 
role. Exactly. Right? Because, because usually chefs don't, don't, they don't get into all that. No, they can have TV shows, they have their restaurants, and they don't really get into helping the community like that. Right. But he's doing something meaningful with his career. I remember now now that you're saying that he... he so he's the guy that had the problem with Trump. I, mm -hmm. I believe it was when Trump, and I'm not sure about the details, but I think it was when Trump was talking about Mexican. the Mexicans That's and getting rid of the Mexicans. And I think he took a... The, the, the chef took a offense to it because yeah. he probably worked with a lot of Mexicans and was like, you're, you know, this is the business. Like, yeah. I mean, these are the people that are working hard in these kitchens with me. And you're, you're talking about them as if they are supposed to be, you know, like they're illegals and they're all criminals. Yeah. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll be patient. Let me sit back. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So then going into his um, humanitarian work, in response of 2010 Haiti earthquake, he formed the World Central Kitchen, which provides healthy food to families and individuals touched by the disaster. Um, the organization operated in Southern Cal California during December 2017 wildfires to assist firefighters and first responders. And also, um, Chef Jose Andres emerged as a leader of the disaster relief efforts in Puerto Rico in the wake of the Hurricane Maria in 2017. Um, he organized a grass a grassroots movement of chefs and volunteers to establish communications, food supplies, and other resources and started serving meals. Andres and his organization served more than 2 million meals Damn. in the first month after the hurricane. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's, it's just, um, it's incredible that so many people that are not from Puerto Rico um, after the hurricane became part of the relief efforts. Yeah. Which that, that says a lot about them. Like they, they care about, they, they wanted to make a difference and they wanted yeah. to help. Um, and then I have a little bit of more information about what we were talking before with the Trump situation. Okay, yeah. Uh, so he planned to, uh, Chef Jose Andres, planned to open a restaurant in the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. in 2016. Um, however, after Donald Trump uh, made despairing comments about Mexicans in June mm -hmm. 2015, Andres withdrew from the contract with the Trump Organization, which then sued him. So after he withdrew from the contract, Trump, the organization, sued him. And then Chef Jose Andres countersued um, Trump. <laughs> and they finally reached a settlement in April 2017. Wow. And uh, Chef Jose Andres continued to be outspoken um, and criticizing Trump because of his policies, the way he communicates, and the way he talks about Latinos, and more about um, his response for um, to Puerto Rico after the hurricane. Yeah. Because he was so involved in the relief efforts that I, I imagine that he couldn't believe that this was the president. Yeah. Um, the way he responded to the disaster was horrible. That's crazy. I remember when, when that came out in the news th that this... I just heard it from a distance. This yeah, yeah. whole thing about a chef and and there being some sort of backlash, and and I, I just remember thinking like, why is Trump fighting with this chef? And mm -hmm. like, what well, I did I didn't understand it, but I did remember at a certain point realizing, like, oh, it's probably because he's working. You know, he's got a lot of Mexicans working with him, and or he their Mexican culture in general. Yeah, you know, he's tied to from maybe years of experience and even personally. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I was like, wow, I, I can't believe like it even it, it would even affect an individual like a chef opening a restaurant and all that to the point of lawsuits and all that versus Trump, mm -hmm. somebody who's going to be the president. It just seems so weird. It seems so like 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 a cartoon of like yeah, a big I mean, bad guy and then the small exactly. guy trying to fight the system and trying to, you know. Exactly, yeah. But, but it makes sense. Now that you're telling me a little more about his history, the fact that he helped with Haiti and all that, like, that makes sense. It exactly. Makes sense. Um, that's why I was saying that he is committed 
not only to the Caribbean but the Latino community yeah. in general because the way he responded if he wouldn't have been any other chef he would be like oh I don't care whatever yeah. that's not my problem yeah. but I feel because of the connection he has with the community he probably felt um, the pressure yeah he to, was to, like if to I don't say do something this? yeah to say something or do something yeah no yeah no I, I could see uh, any other chef. that's why I was thinking like any other chef would probably just fold and go along with it and say mm -hmm. all right you know whatever you want you know blah blah, blah. Um, so kudos to him I mean yeah yeah you know? um, and then just uh, another fact about Chef Jose Andres is that he owns restaurants in Washington DC Philadelphia Los Angeles mm -hmm. Las Vegas South Beach Florida and Dorado Puerto Rico so he has a restaurant oh, in Puerto yeah, okay. Rico okay now so, we have somewhere to go we gotta go check it out exactly <laughs> do you know the name of his, of his restaurants no but I'm gonna look it up okay. and I'm gonna research it and we're gonna go check it out <laughs> But um, I feel that it's um, important that we get to know a little bit about the people that are helping our communities, that are representing us, even though they're not even Latinos. Or um, he is like, because I feel like because he's from Spain, he's European, but he's not really Latino. Right. But um, once I guess that once he came to the United States, the first people he connected with was, was the Latino. Right. Um, community. So I feel like it's important to know about people like him that wants to make a difference and that use his voice, um, his resources, and his um, talent to help. Did it, didn't he? Wasn't there news coverage? Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same person, but he was in Puerto Rico handing out, literally handing out meals, right? Yeah, this is this is that the was chef. him. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember the news footage, and it, I didn't know who it was. Yeah, he um, also on on his um, on the internet, it says that he had some contracts with FEMA, but then I don't know what happened that those contracts um, stopped, and I think that he continued to. Uh, give out meals even after the contracts mm. were denied or stopped or whatever happened. Um, but yeah, he was the one that was going from town to town, uh, giving people meals and food because after the hurricane, it was difficult to find even uh, a can of beans. Yeah. So that's that's real commitment. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, I mean. I don't know how many chefs would do that, really. No, no, <laughs> not really. Right? And and he was praised by many other chefs and more when he was under attack by Trump. Like Anthony Bourdain, I saw on Twitter. Um, I saw that on Twitter, Chef Jose Andres posted something, and then Anthony Bourdain retweeted it saying that Chef Jose Andres was a hero and why Trump is, you know, messing with him when he has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's when you, when he gets that recognition also from his peers, and peers that are well known in the industry, you know that he's doing something good. That right. that is something different. Yeah, I mean, and, and now, <sighs> after so much time has passed, and and we've seen Trump's presidency, and we've seen his reaction to crisis, and and helping people or not helping people, or mm -hmm. the the lack of reaction yeah um i think it's more of a more now more than ever we should be appreciating the people who are standing up to him yeah or the people who have and we haven't really we haven't i guess we haven't noticed exactly because you know so much news has happened <laughs> in such a short period of time so many events mm -hmm. that it becomes a blur and it's hard to keep track of who are the heroes in these moments mm -hmm. um, i remember like i mean changing the topic a little bit but i remember the was it the mayor? Not the mayor. It was yeah, the, mayor. the mayor. The mayor in Puerto the mayor Rico. Of, of San Juan. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was her name? Carmen Yulin. Carmen y Yulin. Yulin? Carmen Yulin. Yeah. I remember when she was all over the news. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was all about her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they almost kind of like shoved her into the spotlight mm -hmm. as, as an opponent to Trump. Mm -hmm. And I remember how she handled things. And I mean, nobody's perfect. Yeah. You know, I know that she has her own politics that not everybody agrees with. Yeah. But at that moment, it was her time to shine and to say something and to speak out. Yeah, she basically became the voice for the Puerto Ricans that didn't thought 
the same as the governor because the governor was right. in another page. Right. So she was the one saying the other aspect of the coin, showing the the other face of the coin. Right, right. And and she was she was going toe to toe with Trump. Yeah. At least on Twitter and whatever, yeah, on yeah. social media mm-hmm. and through the through the media outlets, just to like, you know, oppose and and bring light to the yeah. fact that he wasn't doing anything. Exactly. Um, but like those people, like where is she now? Like so much time has passed, and we don't really hear about those people anymore. Mm-hmm. And those people are standout people, right? They're people that at, when 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 there's a crisis, they're the ones that actually react. Yeah, you exactly. You know, and actually do things. And this chef also, I mean, you know, who knows what he's doing now? We should actually look into what he's doing <laughs> now, actually. Yeah. But um, but all right. So we're gonna check out his restaurants. Yeah. Shout out to Jose. Chef Jose Andres. <laughs> Jose Andres. All right. You wanted me to teach you, right? Street Hablando español, Carla. What do you got? Hablando, hablando, hablando español. Yes. So let's start with mistakes. How do you say mistakes? <laughs> no mistakes. Um, what? All right, there's, a, I guess, a few words. So, mistakes can be errors, mm-hmm. errores. Yeah. Mistakes, errores, that's errors. Yeah. But there's no actual mistake in Spanish, right? The word mistake. Errores. Errores. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, next one. I was going to say pen, but we have discussed pen a oh, lot. Oh, no, no, no. Let's discuss it again. Oh, this is controversial. Okay. okay. Pen. How do you say pen? Pen es fero. Until I die, it will be esfero. <laughs> you don't say esfero. So what are the words? I, we went over this already, and we okay, even had people well, out there Exactly. Okay, in. you say esfero. I say esfero. What do you guys say? I say bolígrafo. But then I have something interesting. Okay. I looked up how do you say ballpoint pen in Spanish. And the Google says that it's bolígrafo. Yeah, because that's a bolígrafo. Bolígrafo. Ball. Well, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's fair. Es, es, es bolígrafo, pero okay. All right. Next one, no, important. <laughs> What? Important. Im- important. Oh, important. Um, important is importante. Yes. Next one, discipline. Discipline in spanish is disciplina yeah and then if it's disciplined like you are disciplined disciplinado no yes yeah yeah disciplinado yes uh next one session how do you say session session (laughs) session yes really yes (laughs) <laughs> that's the one I, i had doubts i was like can't be that literal okay <laughs> session is session yes um how do you say the phrase work with work with hey, give me the sentence well you were saying on a sentence but um uh i work with pen oh. with a pen trabajo con yeah Basically. Okay. <laughs> trabajo con. Yo trabajo, trabajo con, con un bolígrafo o. Con un esfero. Trabajo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> utilizo, tam- utilizo un bolígrafo. Utilizo. Utilize. Utilizo. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, next one. Uh, managing. How do you say managing? Managing. Uh, managing would be. Manejar. No. Yes. I mean, manejar... Is to drive. Can be two things. So manejar can be to drive. Can be to drive, but more it can commonly, also be... It's more commonly used. Yeah. Manejar is, is to drive. Yeah. Managing... What's another one? In manejar Spanish? también. Manejar. Yeah. Como manejando el... Como manejando... El, es, el esfero. Yeah, exactly. Manejando el lápiz. Yeah. Es, es, it's almost the same as driving. Managing the Because you have to manage the, the, the right. thing that you're moving. You yeah, know? yeah. Or the thing that you're utilizing. Yeah. Gotcha. So you have to manage it. All right. All right. So managing is manejar. Yes. How do you say hieroglyphics? <laughs> I 
feel like we've said this one before. No, we haven't. Hieroglyphics? Or we did, I don't remember. I, iro, iro, hieroglyphico? I, I don't know, man. I'm trying to pronounce it in Spanish. It's not working. <laughs> How do you say hieroglyphics? Hieroglyphicos. But you do pronounce it... Hi- Hieroglyphicos. I thought the H goes silent. No, because it's written J. Oh, in Spanish it's written yeah. with a J. It's written J-E-R-O. Ah, oh, that's G. news to me. I imagine mm-hmm. that's, that it stays with an H and you, and you no. go silent on no, the no. H. No. So hieroglyphics in Spanish is hieroglyphicos. Hieroglyphicos is probably it's probably uh, not an English word. Most likely, because because then if in Spanish they are rewriting it so that it still sounds the same, it's mm-hmm. because it's a foreign word to both languages. Maybe. So hieroglyphics. Hiero, Hiero, hieroglyphicos. Hiero, hiero, hieroglyphicos. Hieroglyphicos. Yes. Hieroglyphicos is hieroglyphics. All right. Wow. Next one, thin. How do you say thin? Thin, delgado. Oh, yes. That's easy. Come on, man. Come on. Come uh, on. Next one, how do you say thick? Grueso. Oh. Come on, man. Okay. Next one, how do you say permanently? Permanently. Permanentemente. Yes. Got it. Permanentemente. Permanently. And last one, how do you say free? Free? Libre. Yes. All right. I got, I got a couple for you before oh, we call this God. Okay. quits. Dale. Pencil. Lapis. I think a lot of people out there would know that. That's Spanish 101. Mm-hmm. Pencil is lapis. Mm-hmm. What about eraser? Um, eraser is borrador. Is there another one or is that is that it? En Puerto Rico le llamamos goma. Goma. Le gum. goma. Gum for the eraser. Goma. Sí. All right. Yeah, no, we say borrador. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that's it. And, and marker? Uh, marker, marcador. Marcador, yeah, there's no mm-hmm. other one. All right, guys, that's your Spanish lesson. Speak your Spanish. Speak your Spanish. Habla tu español. Another episode is wrapped up. <laughs> uh, next episode, we are going to do a movie review. Oh, yeah. We're going back to movie reviews. We're going to review a good one, uh, Motorcycle Diaries. It is a, the story, it's based on a book about uh, a road trip between Che Guevara and an old friend of his. It's based on a book, the diaries of them taking this road trip through Latin America. Um, actually, it's good timing for that. I'm in the mood to watch it. So I think that's good. That's going to be a good one. Yeah. All right. And we're going to be hablando español. Uh, yep. What are you going to talk about in our club? In our